Okay, we've got bisectors of triangles. All right, so we're starting off with a definition. Concurrent lines, they are three or more lines that do what? Well, they're three or more lines that intersect at a single point. Okay, so, hey, if we've got three lines, none of them are going to be parallel. They're all going to be on the same plane. So these three lines that I'm sketching here all intersect at that single point, and those would be concurrent lines then, okay? And you could call the point where they intersect the point of concurrency. And a large part of this um, chapter is going to deal with different types of points of concurrency. And we've got two of them in this section. Okay. All right. So um, we've got something called the in-center of a circle. Okay. So the in-center of a circle is the center of a circle that is inscribed in a triangle. It's the center of a circle that is inscribed in a triangle, okay? So, inscribed just means it's inside, right? In. Just look at the word in. So, the, the circle's inside the triangle, but it fits in there perfectly, okay? Um, so, we could say here that this circle is inscribed in that triangle. And it's going to be the center of this circle, so I'm just going to sketch in the center here, okay? Um, now, there's a couple of things you need to know about the in-center of a triangle. One of them is that the, it's the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors. Okay, the angle bisectors. So the angle bisectors, obviously I'm talking about the triangle, right? This circle doesn't have angles. So that means if, if we were to take, say, this corner at the top and bisect it, and I'm just going to sketch this in, Okay, but if you bisected it, it should meet up perfectly with the center of that triangle. So I'm going to put in those to show that that's bisected. Now I could continue that, but I don't want this to get too messy. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm really just going to draw lines in that go from the center of the circle to the corners. And I'm not measuring this, but if I did measure this out and was careful with it, you could see that, that those end up being angle bisectors in all three corners. And just sketching it, it actually looks like it does work there. That works with any um, circle that's inscribed in a triangle like that. Okay. The other thing we need to know is that the in-center is going to be equidistant from the vertices. Nope. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. It's equidistant from the sides of a triangle, not from the vertices. My bad, I was looking at the wrong part. Equidistant from the sides of the triangle, okay? So if I'm talking about this point and I want to talk about the distance from here to this side, I'm gonna go the shortest possible distance, which would be the perpendicular distance. So I'm just going to sketch in a little segment at a right angle right that, like that, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing going down to this side from the center. And then also to this side from the center. And you might notice it's actually the, those points where the circle meets the triangle, okay? And um, all three of those distances are going to be congruent to each other. So... Um, yeah, those purple spokes that I have there are all congruent because um, the in-center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. So I'm going to put four dashes on each of these. One, two, three, four. Just so it doesn't get confused with the angles. Okay. I guess I could have put one. Obviously, it's uh, the segment's not congruent to an angle, but there we go. So that's what you need to know about the in-center of a triangle. There's kind of a lot to digest there.
Um, but let's uh, let's take a look at an example. I'll keep that info on the screen to help us with this problem. Okay. So this tells us that n is the in center. Okay. Good to know. All right. So then um, somehow I want to solve for x. So they're telling me that n d. That's I'm just gonna label this a little bit. N d. That's that piece is 5x minus 1, okay? And then NE right here is 2x plus 11, okay? Well, since this is the in center, um, that means that um, the distance from this, the center to all of the sides is going to be congruent, okay? And since I can see that those are the points where the circle and the line meets, that means I know that those actually are the shortest distances. And all three of those would be congruent. And I don't really care about the piece on the bottom for this particular problem, but the fact that those two are congruent lets me say, hey, 5x minus 1 equals 2x plus 11. OK, now I can subtract 2x from both sides. Add 1, and then out of space here, and then divide by 3, and x is going to come out to 4. Okay. All right, next up, find nd. Here it is. There is nd, but let's find the length of it, right? So what I can do is plug my x value in there for x, right? I already know that x is 4, so nd is going to equal 5 times 4 minus 1, that comes out to 19. Find nf. Well, nf doesn't have, um, have any expression for me to plug anything into, but I already know that those two are congruent. And I already figured out that this one is uh, the 5x minus 1 comes out to 19, right? So that means all of these are going to have a value of 19 because they're all congruent, right? These are all 19. And then so I could say, okay, well, this one's 19 as well. Okay. All right. So the problems aren't difficult once you um, once you know what pieces are congruent. The problem is that there's different types of con concurrency, and then it can get a little confusing. Okay. So our second type of concurrency is called a circumcenter of a triangle. Okay. And here's how this is going to work. Okay. The circumcenter of um, a triangle is the center of a circle that um, passes through all three vertices. Okay, so if you take any circle, um, or sorry, any triangle, you can always draw a circle that, that touches all three corners, okay? And we could also say that this circle circumscribes the triangle, okay? So let me see where I can fit that in. Okay, so in this picture, the circle circumscribes the triangle. The circumscribe means it's on the outside, right? The triangle is inscribed, the circle is circumscribed. If I look at this one, here the circle is inscribed, the triangle is circumscribed, okay? Like if you think about circumnavigate the Earth, it means you're going around the outside of the, the Earth, like Magellan, right? Okay, all right, so let's look at this then. Um, we've got, so it's going to be the center of this circle, okay? So I'm just eyeballing this here. Um, I don't know, something somewhere in there, okay? Just eyeballing it. If I wanted to be really accurate, I could measure this, but um, we don't need to for, for now, okay? And it's going to be the point of concurrency. So it's going to be where something meets, right, where three line segments meet. And those three line segments are going to be the angle bisectors. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking at the wrong thing. The perpendicular bisectors of the sides, I meant. Perpendicular bisectors. I keep glancing at the wrong point of concurrency, okay? Of the sides. 
Glad I caught that before I got too far. Okay, so um, if I'm thinking about the perpendicular bisectors of the sides, so let's take this side of the triangle. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball, there's the midpoint roughly, right? And then I'm going to draw a perpendicular line, and I'm just going to make it go to that center. Because this is all sketches, but this would be the, um, the um, perpendicular bisector there. Okay, let's do the same thing with the bottom of the triangle. If I cut that in half, something like this, and then draw a little perpendicular segment like so. We can do the same thing on this third side. And again, in this all freehand, but we could measure all of this out if we want it to be accurate. And if you actually did take the time to draw in the perpendicular bisector nicely, that all three of them would meet in a single point. That single point, I can see I was a little off here, would be the circumcenter of the circle. And, and um, yeah, and that's going to be also the uh, point of concurrency of the angle of the perpendicular bisectors at the sides of the triangle, okay? And this is going to wind up being equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. Okay, so if I look at this um, circumcenter and I draw a little line segment that goes to the corner of the triangle, the vert vertex of the triangle, or this vertex, or this vertex, those three segments that are red that I just drew are going to all be congruent. Okay, so um, I guess I'll have to put four dashes because I already used up one, two, and three. All right. All right. So this next piece of information is very useful. Um, um, so I would recommend just memorizing this. Okay. If you look at the triangle that I have here, I mean, I don't have a protractor out, but it sure looks like an acute triangle to me. It looks like all three of the angles of that original triangle are less than 90 degrees. Okay. And then the, the circumcenter ended up being inside the triangle. Okay, so it says here are the locations of the circumcenter for different sides, different, different types of triangles. So for acute triangles, it's going to be inside the triangle. Okay, I'm not going to draw a picture, but if you had an obtuse angle, that means just one of the angles is obtuse, the circumcenter is going to end up outside of the, the, um, of the triangle. Okay, and if it's a right triangle, it will be on one of the sides of the triangle. Okay, and it's a right triangle. One of the sides of the triangle is going to be the hypotenuse, and so it since it's on, it's going to be, it's going to wind up being on the hypotenuse. So it's actually going to end up being the midpoint of the hypotenuse. So this one's going to be on um, a side of the triangle. Okay. And I'm going to put in parentheses, this is going to be the midpoint of the hypotenuse. It's going to be a great way to check your work if you're dealing with a right triangle and actually to use a really nice shortcut. Okay, so let's look at a couple of problems. Okay, so let's find the circumcenter of this triangle. All right, so first thing that is um, jumping out at me here is that this triangle is a right triangle. I can see that because, hey, this line's vertical and this one is um, horizontal, okay? So that's gonna be, that's great news. That's gonna make things a lot easier in two different ways. Um, one thing I can do, I wanna find, I'm finding the circumcenter. So I have to remember, what, what am I looking for here? This is going to be where the perpendicular bisectors meet, okay? So if I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to sketch in the perpendicular bisectors. I actually only need to sketch two of them in.
because um, all three of them should meet in the same place. If I want to be really careful, I could put in all three of them, okay? Now the grid here printed pretty light for me, but I'm, I can find the uh, midpoint of the top of this pretty easily because I can see it's four units long. So I'm just going to find the midpoint there, okay? So that I've got those congruent parts there. And then all I have to do, since this is a horizontal line, I'm going to draw in a vertical line. Maybe I'll do this with a pencil. But I'm going to sketch in a vertical line. And hey, that is the perpendicular bisector of the top side. Okay. Now I can do the same thing with the left side. So all I have to do, I cut that in half. I can see it's four units again, so I just cut this in half. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line because that would be perpendicular to the vertical one, right? And now that I've drawn that carefully, hey, I can see where those meet. Okay. And wait a second, that sure looks like the midpoint of the hypotenuse of this triangle. And it actually is, right? So now I've found the circumcenter. I could draw in the third, the third perpendicular bisector. It would be something like this. But I don't really need to because I already know they're going to meet right there. Okay. So this is going to be the point. Um, this is going to be, let's see the point. This is 3, 4. The point 3, 4. And that's my solution. That's the circumcenter. Okay. A little shortcut. Don't tell anyone I told you. But you can just find the midpoint of the hypotenuse. If you have a right triangle, it's always going to end up there. Okay, so hey, we've got another right triangle here. So I'm still going to go through this work, but no one would know the difference if you just found the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Okay, and then just to show you, if you were to sketch in a circle, this is not easy to do, and and I'll probably do a, a crappy job here. But I'm going to try to draw a circle that goes through points A, B, and C. So I'm going to sketch this. Not easy to do. I'm not if I wanted to be neat, I could use a compass. Okay, and you don't have to do this, but I just want to show you that the circle that would go through those three points, it sure looks like, hey, that's looks like it would be the center of that circle. And if we did this neatly, it would be. That's what the circumcenter is. Okay. Alright. So I'm gonna try the same thing here. So I'm gonna draw in First, the um, perpendicular bisector of the bottom of the triangle here. So I can see there's the midpoint. Okay, it's horizontal, so I'll draw a vertical line. Okay, one down. Let's find the uh, perpendicular bisector of AB. I always use the horizontal and vertical sides. They're way easier to draw in. Um, because, you know, I'd have to find the slope of this and then the perpendicular slope if I really wanted to be um, accurate. So here I can see this is three units, so let's cut that in half. So I'm going to go one and a half either from the top or from the bottom, and then I cut that in half. Okay, so I cut this in half here, now I've cut this in half, and then I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. Okay, and hey, there is my circumcenter. So I'm thinking, okay, this is five units to the right, one half unit down. So this is going to be the point five, negative one half. Or you can say negative point five if you want. I don't care. Okay. And again, if you drew in, sketched in this circle, I'm going to spend a bunch of time doing this, but if I sketched it in and I did a nice job, you'd be able to see that that's going to end up at the center of that circle. Okay. Okay, that's it for this time. I'll see you next time.